And we are live, and we are recording. Uh, may have quite a bit of background noise on this one, because I had to open a window to stick a vent hood out. Let me tell the internet what I got going on. Twitter. And there's Macedon. So, I already told Glowforge Farms this was going to be live. So, I guess. Okay, that stream came online. Alright. So, um. So this is the sort of thing you can't really do with just one person here. Um, so in the meantime, I'm going to get back to my roots in this stream and put together It's not exactly Legos, but picked this up in Japan. Little tiny model bullet train. See about what this looks like, nano block, nano gauge, the original micro size building block, and judging by the package, it looks like this is meant to be a complete set that you get a motor and you get tracks, or you can just straight up run it on regular N gauge model train tracks, which I don't know. Don't really intend to get, but and this is. This is um, this is looks quite a bit more like uh, traditional Legos with just regular rectangular bricks than um, than I'm used to with the with the spaceships and stuff having I mean, all the different angles and all the different gangle pieces. Those layers are actually really cool putting that together like that. And Mini Mac joined in. I thought you were supposed to be on your way over here, filthy assistant. But, um, let me also tell the Glowforge forums that. Okay. 
Medium Max says he's parking. We're trying to just check out where I am before I just get started here. So this is the instructions say you want to actually have uh, tweezers to put these together, and I think I see where they're coming from. Right now. So let's get it. I'm more used to the Lego bag, it's just kind of shred. There we go. So we got all the 2x4 and 1x4 pieces here. And white. That's really all that's coming out of this. So three 2x2s, 2x4s, 15. One by four, fifteen, three things that don't seem to be in this, which are probably in here. You should make yourself move. Yeah. So, if this were being produced by the Lego group, we'd start from this. But this seems to be saying, put, every, put the first three layers together, and then put it down on top of this piece. Which, sure, I suppose we can do that. This is my working cache. For anyone just tuning in looking for laser, um, I uh, am not going to be able to set it up myself. So uh, the, my my helper, Midi Mac, my assistant is uh, uh, he's here, but he still needs to actually eat food. So he's going to go ahead and do that while I'm just messing around and making a little nano block crane. I don't know who, how many people are actually watching. It might just be, it might just be me for all I know, because the um, the IRC, the chatty client that is hooked into the chat doesn't it tends, tends to lag behind in telling you who's actually in the channel, or if there's anybody in the channel actually at all, and there might just be people um, watching that it's not telling you about. If you're not signed into Twitch. If you don't have an account, I just get a kind of blank screen. So two of those, nine of these. Nine. And of course, some little slopey things out of the last bin. This is scattering everywhere. And then of course what's going to happen is I'm going to get a quarter of the way through this and then ditch it to actually do the fun stuff that we're all here for. The Glowforge Pro. Um, so I'm just going to have a little baggie with all, this, uh, all these little tiny Lego bits in it. No, they're not Legos. They're totally not Legos. And uh, there's probably Danish lawyers getting ready to come insure, to come reassure me that these are not to be referred to as Legos. They are nano blocks. I don't don't think they're even Lego compatible. So in the back, let's start working on this from the back. I think, shall we? So that one. Two of those, and two of those, and then across the top we have. Hey, cat, how's it going? Uh, thanks for tuning in. Just uh, 
doing a little little tiny train deal. So we've got the, those hooked together there. Couple of these. I'm sure this is absolutely the uh, th thrilling sort of stream that you tuned in to pick up on. And the uh, overhead camera I've got doesn't even zoom in any closer than this, so you kind of got to stare up into this middle middle section here. Um, and then start working our way down this. Uh, yeah, that's not how that goes at all. Let's go on top. Uh, these are a mini Lego bullet train. They're not actually part of the. Uh, they're not actually part of the laser at all. I'm waiting for uh, for my filthy assistant Anders to actually feed himself so he doesn't collapse from um, low blood sugar while we're actually trying to unbox the. Um, while we're actually trying to unbox the laser itself. So we're not going to. We can make sure not to uh, actually kill anybody on stream today. Working with dangerous enough stuff as it is, so I'm going to actually go ahead and just put this onto the. Yeah, eat. Food is good for everybody. I'm going to go ahead and put this onto the base because it's pretty obvious how it's going to fit onto there, and that's going to make my counting work a lot better too. So that's five one by fours along the side. Things fly away. Three, four, and five. Three, four, and five. And then that's along the top. There's four, two, four, two, and then a couple slopies. And then another two. Let's go back to the bottom row in the middle of the last set of four. Oh, geez, of course that doesn't fit nicely there at all. So that goes that way. That binds across the front. This is going to go across that to hold those in place. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I don't know if the uh, the cat noises are coming through the um, coming through on the mic, but uh, my cat Mordred seems to have caught something. Probably a bit of string or a bit of webbing. She's yelling very loudly, wants the entire house to know that she has caught a thing and we should all be very proud of her. Which, well, I suppose I am. She's pretty... Oh, sounds like coming through. How is the background noise just from the road noise? Because I had to open the window um, just to get the vent hose out. Which you can kind of see in the corner over here. That goes out a window and that window looks over a freeway. So I don't know how much of that noise actually comes through. Sparkle Peep, hey, come on in, how's it going? Um, good to see you. I haven't started breaking into the laser just yet because... Okay. Yeah, I haven't started breaking into the laser yet. I'm, I'm uh, waiting, waiting for my helper to make sure he's actually fed himself so that we don't actually break anything when we're coming through this. 
So, hello, Mordred. Cat's gonna come make a mess. So, two by two, we have two. Or, sorry, one by two. One by four. I can. Three. You're gonna be in the way. You're gonna be in the way. I'm just gonna kick everything everywhere. One by one, we have 14. I got the It's Ready to Ship email at the beginning of October. Let me see if I have the exact date on that. Um, the. Yeah, your Glowforge is on its way. Was no, that's the ship. That's the actual shipment notification. Um, yeah, the the shipment notification was just a day or two before I actually got it. Um, Gmail. The would you would you like your Glowforge came on October tenth. Your Glowforge it was on it is on its way it was on October twenty sixth, and the laser itself arrived uh, arrived on the twenty seventh. I believe the twenty seventh, if that was the Thursday. So I hear that that's somewhat faster than they were actually than the original or the first couple rounds of lasers were shipping. Yeah, a couple weeks could be worse after the after the uh, two year delay from actually actually excuse me actually ordering it. Eight, nine, ten, and four more of these. Yeah, the uh, the little mini Legos actually have nothing to do for people who are still turning in later, tuning in late, little mini Legos have nothing to do with the laser itself. Just um, biding some time, burning some time, so my my helper, who's going to help me actually lift it out of the box, can actually eat something and make sure that we don't drop things. So, and I just got back from Japan and was looking at just little random silly toys they have, and some of the things I found were these mini model Shinkansens, which I'm sure I'm butchering the pronunciation of, but totally not Legos, we swear, they're called nanoblocks. Eight of these. Eight. Two of these. And the, um, I'm actually kind of curious if these are going to be, no, these are almost certainly not Lego compatible, but, um, kind of funny if they were. So you can just go jump down into, into half scale on the Lego to see about that. All right, so I finally got everything together. Start putting this in from the back again on the lower layer. We have little ones and a blue stripe down the side. So this is, okay, that's five. No, it's four. One by threes. I'm wondering why they did four one by threes instead of three one by fours when they obviously have the machining to make them. And then a little slopey bit. Oh, that's kind of a cute, cool little construction in there. Slopey bit next to another slopey bit. And so this is going to be just a little blocky for actual aerodynamics, but still going to be kind of cool, I think. So we have the end of the blue stripe coming up like this, and a little, well, 
slopey bits coming down on that. And then weird stuff getting stuck together. This one. Hey. Hello. You fed? I am fed. Everyone. This is my filthy assistant Anders. Hello. He's here to actually get this stuff out of the box, so wanna get started? Sure. Alright. And all that. Do you I'll just hold this in the corner? Yeah. Okay. Or just if you can actually get get into the baggie. Into the baggie. So I have before me Glowforge Pro Laser Safety Officer Training. You can take my word for it that I've read through it. I'm officially the laser safety officer for this facility, which happens to be my own house. So I should hope that um, the uh, OSHA is not actually going to come after me here for it. Hey, Sev tuned in. One Sev, two Sev. Good to see you. Why are you... Don't you have better things to be doing this weekend? <laughs> so, um, we have... I should make an LSO badge, is what I should do. First so, project. On, on the back of this, it also has the warning sign. So I can maybe put this into the laser and have it scan that and then make my own laser safety sign with a laser. Um, <laughs> kind of ignoring the paradox of theoretically needing to have the sign up. Aw, sweet. Aww. Theoretically needing to have the sign up before I'm legally allowed to use the laser, but this is also not a business or education facility. So, um, really, who's going to care? It's, it's only until it's only if I uh, turn my house into a makerspace or take this over to a makerspace or something that I'm actually going to do that. So, also some of the preparation I've been doing, which would have been super boring, is I have already opened up a window and set up the uh, vent hose here, sitting out there, um, so you don't have to watch me trying to cut holes in the plastic and make sure the window thing fits, and it's really kind of hackish. I wish I had better pictures of how it was put together, but I'm kind of happy with it. So, almost there. And then... Kind of my screen capture is covering up my pile of junk over here, but I also have the clamp ready for the other end of the vent hose. So, put that out of the way. We're almost cleaned up over here. I thought about just scooping it in there, but then the potential for lost pieces yeah, is too great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, could have brought a funnel in or something. Just Yeah. All right. So we have the manual up on the screen. I don't know how much... Helps if I turn them up. <laughs> Excuse you, Mordred. That's my loom. I have theoretically been working on a carpet on this loom over here off screen for two years, three years. Um, but it just sits there so the cat can scratch at it, so it's basically been pulled apart at this point. Anyway, I don't know if the, uh, I don't know if the resolution's good enough on the screen for the, for the manual to actually be visible or legible, so I've got that open up on my screen over here, so unboxing, let's get going. Damage, any damage, no, I already checked on that when it showed up, even though UPS, um, basically just put it on its side in my driveway and then came to the door to tell me it was there even though it had the very obvious you know this end up this is very fragile they just put it and put it up on its side so the package itself isn't uh, isn't particularly damaged except one of the handle locks has come out um, and I haven't opened it up to check out anything inside so tour of the parts lid camera We'll get to that. That's not really three boxes, two of which I've already opened. Third box is time to open up right now. So, and uh, we're gonna have to kind of rush through this because the, the box itself is off camera, so we're not gonna be the most visible when we're doing that. So, you can see the preview. Get over here. You're totally off screen. 
página. <laughs> Uh, so let's open the handle locks and just get the get the top of the box off. Um, another thing that Glowforge does is um, they tell you to keep all your original packaging in case you need to ship everything back. So hopefully they don't get mad at me for using the one handle lock that wasn't there when this showed up. One of the locks is being super stubborn about coming out. <laughs> there we go. It's just not close. And it should just come off. It is too Oh. Yeah, okay. Turns out the uh, box is actually taped as well, because that's smart. Problem solver. So, after all my complaining about the this end up, it turns out it's taped, so we gotta tip it up on the end, on the side anyway. All right, box back down, lid comes off, show the lid for the camera. <laughs> but this is great. This is really gorgeous. Next step, prepare where to put it before you remove from the box. I have this wide open swath of table, what more do you want from me? A hard, flat, and stable surface. Yep. Might be a little shaky, but whatever, okay. Remove the top layer of protective foam. Have two people lift the Blue Forge unit out of the box. Ta -da. Ta -da. So, this is giant. The gorgeous Glowforge. I was not entirely sure if I was going to be able to fit it in sideways in this section over here. I'll probably try to in the future, just for my own use, have it over here so I've got a little more just space on the table. But for this stream, this is about, this is what I'm here for, so this is what we get to see. So, place the unit with at least an inch of clear space in all directions, which means I do have space to push it back, although I want to do that after I connect the vent, connect the vent which is on the right side. It's over here. Oh, that is... Exhaust? No. Yeah, that's the exhaust. They, they call it the right side. I would actually call that side the left, because it's user left, but apparently we're going with stage right over there. So... You got, got the clamp over there? Yes, I do. Okay. But the clamp's kind of a pain. Yeah, I can. Let's see the spot. I really actually, having messed with the, uh, having messed with the clamp doing the window thing, I actually really prefer the, um, the style of hose clamp that you have to tighten down with the screwdriver. So I may um, go over to the hardware store later and um, get one of those, get two of those, so these can be a little more cleanly put together. But for now, that seems to be a pretty secure grip on there. Uh, sure. Call that a grip on there. Push this back so we got a little more space. There's a uh, sign on the came on the uh, package. It says to turn on this magic button. These are interface for the Glowforge. The only physical piece is this button right here that is sadly off camera. Everything, everything else is web based. So. 
I assume the next step is actually plug it in and turn it on. Cons confirm safety equipment. See fire, smoke, safety, fume safety. Did all that already. There is foam inside the glow clerk as well. That's yes, that is going to be later steps. All right. You've secured your glow forge with two foam blocks and several important orange and red bits. Very specific. Rear foam block also holds your printer head and power cord. Lift the lid of your glow forge and lower the front door. Door up. Oh, that's that is not the best place for that to be relative to the camera, is it? Let's see if I can push this a little further back. So I've got a little better view. Kind of like that you're getting this kind of shader. Not that shader, but you're looking through the uh, camera at me or through the lid. Remove the foam block. Remove the front foam block. Excuse me. And lower the front door. Lower well. the yeah. front door. Yeah. Remove the front front foam block. Yeah. Random foam bit. Snow cat toy. Remove the knobs. knobs. There are knobs on the inside on both sides. Left and right, red knobs. Unscrew them. Pull them out. The one here. Longer than I was expecting. Shows it. One on the other side, presumably the same length. There's a small black washer on each red knob. Your small black washer still stuck. Double check they're attached before you store the red knobs. Well, I guess these shouldn't actually be kept to as now if I think of it. Because. In case there's a problem. Yeah, you need to shoot it back. I mean. We're really only about, what, seven miles from Glowforge <laughs> HQ right now, but I assume the shipping doesn't actually go to headquarters where they do all the design work. I assume the shipping goes to their factory in California. So, washers confirmed. On both? Still on both the knobs. Okay. Though at some point I should maybe get, like, nuts or something to seal those, seal those on so they don't fall off in the box. Step four. Remove the top layer of the rear foam. Reveal your printer head and power cord. And safety, safety glasses. glasses. Safety first. Very fashionable. Branded. Remove the rear foam block. Including printer head and power cord. Set these aside. Uh, this is only two pieces. And the block itself is wider than. There we go. Okay, set these aside. Where do I have the state of this? Remove the clip under the glass tube. You'll find an orange clip. Push down on it, and it will pop off into the box. Push the laser tube back gently. Remove the front strips. Oh, no. Sound. That's a little silly. You should try that. That is very simple. Spot. Two red silicone strips. They must have run out of the red silicone because these are More distinctly large. orange. They match the uh, tab, though. Glow Forge accessory pack, which I've already opened. And the crumb tray. It says the Glowforge glasses were in were going to be in the accessory tray. They uh, seem to have changed their packing plan and put that in the laser itself as well. Slide, Slide in. in the crumb tray. It's just goes cleanly right into. Slide it until you feel the feet settle into the dimples. Have yeah, your feet settled into the dimples? This is a very... Oh, that doesn't sound good. There... Okay, there are feet. I've seen the dimples. There we go. Okay. That settled in nicely. Handles in front. Wide parts in back. Close the front door. Snap in the printer head. Gently slide the metal plate on the laser arm all the way to the right. Push the arm to the back of the unit. Do not touch any part that is not flat black 
metal. I'm particularly careful of the laser window on the side of the head. That is that one, in fact. Right there we have laser head. Remove the orange foam cylinder from inside. Got a nice aperture window in there. Pick up the wire ribbon. Yes. Pick up the printer head. Which way is the logo facing towards you? So that's that way. Which way does that come from? I guess it doesn't really. It doesn't really show. So that is. But there is a snap on the yeah, ribbon. Yes, so this. I see how the snap's going to click into that. Yeah. Snap the ribbon into the head until it clicks, and we got it. Yeah. As shown, lower the printer head over the metal plate so it rests next to the two round posts. Which with the. Oh, they changed the camera angle on that, so that's going to go that way. Gently push it away from you, you'll feel it click as the magnets yep. pull the printer. So down. that's grabbed it nicely on the magnets. Okay. Save everything. Close the front door, lower the lid. I'm assuming we'll have the, the power. power cord still out. What is this? Is anyone else having issues? Yeah. Um, I don't, my, my, uh, Internet connection was having some trouble earlier today. I don't know if there's some weird bandwidth stuff going on. All right, connect to the host unit. Okay, so the it looks like this was also the screw in code. Yeah, yeah. The manual shows the screw together host clamps. I'm gonna have to get uh, better host clamps anyway. There's a hardware store a mile away. No problem. Make sure your blue forge is turned off. Oh, it's depressed. Which means being able to actually see the back of the unit. Oh, I like that you can see your flag reflections. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Which means I need to see the back of the unit. This is, in fact, turned off. Power connections over here. Yeah, I'm just prepping this. Power connections on the right side. It's apparently fans saying on we're the not left broadcasting. Side. Not broad. No, of course not. There is one. Drop frames 28.5%, of course. I wasn't sure if you wanted to try to capture it. Ow. Thanks. Hey, we are back. Um, I'm, yeah, I've been having some internet tr some internet trouble all the way in. Uh, it's at least going to record entirely. I think my bandwidth is just kind of bad today. You can't see what I'm doing. Uh, we've got Anders currently trying to plug in, the, and then the power strip is right under it. Yeah. And we're back. And we are plugged in, and we are ready to go. Let's see. Let's slide this over into the middle at least so the um, light comes up so we can at least have the button on camera. Button. Hey, I actually see a button. Comes online. Super well lit up. Cool noises as are very important on all this technology. 
there's some kind of fluid thing happening yeah. in the back. Laser tube is in fact full of liquid, which is uh, getting all bubbly. Come, lights will come on, the head will move, and the unit will button will glow teal. Button is glowing teal, and we are theoretically ready to go. So, now the next few steps are coming through networking. So, I'm not actually going to do these steps on screen because it's probably going to ask for a password or something. Uh, let's actually do this. Coming in through. Actually, let's do this.
switch back to this. Uh, why? Turn this back on. See if that starts going teal. Like that, you're keeping the safety glasses on for this whole thing. It's very important. It's a very important step of Wi Fi mm -hmm. setup is to be safe. Switch over to Glowforge Wi Fi. On airplane mode. On airplane mode. Connected. This is when you initially get it set up and you're like, okay, we're never disconnecting this ever again. Yeah. One more time from the computer. And if it doesn't work out nicely, I'm going to kill the stream and come on. The app is connected to the device. So this might just be working, because the app has got the has got the right name shown. Printer is showing up as offline. Let's see if I can So the printer has checked in with the server, at the very least. But it doesn't, um, but it's not coming up as well, that's calibrating. calibrating. It claims to be calibrating, but it's not actually doing it. Let's do that again. Which sounds like it's calibrating poorly. <laughs> like it sounds like it's trying to calibrate, but something is in the way of it actually moving. Like we took all the parts out. We got the um, 
Yeah. Maybe. Everything is in there. Everything is connected. Everything's in the right place. estimate for how long the calibrating will take. Yeah, so, uh, so. What about in the how to set up document? Kerner mm -hmm. Hagel Center and the Gannett's head home and process for the deal. That's all I got. <laughs> so it's occasionally just making grumbling noises but not actually doing anything that looks like actual calibration. And I've moved it to the front, I've moved it to the back, so we know everything will move smoothly. Just let it sit and grumble for a while. Maybe, yeah. All right. Or maybe check in with support and see if anybody else has calibration problems. I think this is where we stop the stream and the recording and let it calibrate. Maybe take a lunch break or do you? I you yeah. I told you to eat. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe I take a lunch break. Yeah. All right. See you sometime. <laughs>